Hello, everybody, and welcome along to Central Florida. If you want to come to Sebring for the 66th running of the Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring presented by Advance Auto Parts, you better bring some liquid soap and a shoehorn. It's absolutely packed here, and we're only on qualifying day. We're right in the middle of the state of Florida. This classic bumpy circuit is three and three quarter mile, miles around and 17 corners. The names tell you everything about this place. Christensen, Gurney, Fangio, Jean de Bian, Le Mans. They are all historic names in the endurance racing world. And they're all reflected here at Sebring. Clear skies, great temperatures, huge crowd, atmosphere, history. It all comes together to bring excitement to the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship qualifying, which is up next live on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. It's John Hindorf and Jeremy Shaw in the IMSA broadcast booth overlooking the start-finish line and that, that concrete that, well, that could tell some stories, couldn't it? In the pit lane, our Continental Tire pit lane reporters, Shea Adam, uh, but first, Diana Binks, and we'll check in with Diana with about 45 seconds to the green flag for the GT Daytona qualifying session. And the weather, having been a little misty this morning, Diana, is now absolutely perfect. It is. The conditions are beautiful down here. It's very hot in the pit lane. Um, and the cars, the GTD cars, as you said, are getting ready. They're just firing up the engines. You can probably hear them slightly in the background, ready to do battle. Everyone's standing around waiting with anticipation, but you can just feel that atmosphere starting to build amongst the competitors because they just want to get out there on track and put in that quick lap. 
Green flag flies, perfect timing by Diana Binks. Shea Adam is at the pit in and side of things and making her way down as the cars uh, roll out. And as a Florida girl, Shea, you'll be delighted to see proper Florida weather for our qualifying sessions. This is what I ordered, that's better. Yeah, the weather is beautiful. It's going to be warm for the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge race a little bit later on, but right now, qualifying is ideal. I was just talking with some of the Porsche factory drivers and they said sometimes, depending on the condition, namely the wind, the times can differ up to two seconds a lap. Right now, there's a bit of a tailwind as the guys come from 16 into turn 17, guys and girls, I should say, because Christina Nielsen in this class as well as Catherine Lake. But as they come into 17, they will have a little bit of an extra push, but not much. The Porsche guys seem to think this is ideal for pole. Had a quick chat uh, this morning with Catherine Legg on the way out of uh, breakfast at Marion's and very excited about how the car felt this morning. She was very quick, got under two minutes in the NSX and very experienced silver driver. Catherine, we're hoping to confirm a full programme for the rest of the season. Yes. Very, very talented driver and would be a crime if she does not get a full season ride. Nothing confirmed at the moment. And if anybody's looking for a fast, reliable driver with great feedback and uh, good mentoring skills, uh, I look no further than Catherine Legg as well, a silver yeah, driver. Yeah, absolutely. And I hope she, she can stay with that Michael Jack racing team because uh, she feels that is very one of the much opportunities, at home. I think, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, she's already started off the season with that team. She would love to continue there. Mike Shank, well, I think we'd love to continue. I mean, he's, a, he's got a busy, busy program this season running with the uh, IndyCar as well for a handful of races for Jack Harvey. But I'm sure if the if they could raise the finance, I'm sure, I think, that Mike would love to run Catherine again in a full season program. And there is Catherine coming out the final corner in the 86 car. I almost bumped into her this morning because the overalls for the drivers for that 86 car are in the same sort of urban camouflage as the car is. And she actually blended into the background a bit as she was <laughs> walking through. But uh, really relishing the challenge of Sebring. Loves this Honda NSX. It's been uh, talked to Honda about other programs as well. Of course, if uh, Jack Harvey has a problem, she could always step into Mike Shank's Indy car as well and probably do a decent job there. Yeah, absolutely right. She was uh, very stout when she drove in the, the old Champ Car days. Uh, and uh, winner yeah. in Indy Lights, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Not, uh, Atlantic. Atlantic, yeah. sorry, she yes. The, the four hundred there too. She did Atlantic run uh, three races, I think, in Atlantic. Yeah. Against some very stout that was competition. A strong couple of years. She won at San Jose, that. certainly on the streets. She won at Long Beach too, I think, on the streets, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was a strong couple of years in Atlantic there. Mm. Catherine Legg out on the circuit. Drivers who qualify will start the race, so we'll see the thought process of these teams that are out there. Watch out for the 3G Lexus teams. Dominic Bauman and Jack Hawks with the yeah, uh, are qualifying there. And I've I said this right at the start of the week. They had a good test. She had them covering it us for us uh, here on RS2 IMSA Radio. And we were talking to the 3G guys when we parked up this morning that we were right in front of their their, their paddock area. Yep. And there's an air of quiet confidence there this weekend. That car just looks good over the bumps and it certainly looks quick, as does Catherine Legg as she's coming round here. She's just warming up the Continental tyres. Oh, sorry, that's the 36 car. My apologies, that's the CJ Wilson machine. And in that car is Mark Miller doing the qualifying. That's interesting. Yeah, sharing with uh, Till Bechtelsheimer and uh, Kuno Whitman. I had a little chat with Kuno this morning. Not done awful lot, lot of laps in that car. Well, none of them have, in actual fact. But, uh, you know, they, they've, they've had a few uh, little, little niggly problems yesterday. This is a, one of the cars. It was actually Ryan Eversley's car from the World Challenge Series last season. So, uh, you know, the car is reasonably well sorted, but there's a lot of work to do to cha change it over to IMSA specification. Of course, running on different tires now this year than this than it ran uh, in 2017. So it's been a really good effort by the CJ Wilson team to get this car prepared and, and running up to speed. They, they've tried a few setup changes during the weekend. They've actually gone slower. They tried to uh, stiffen up the car, uh, make it a sort of you know, a stouter platform uh, on which f for the driver to work on, but it hasn't really worked in their favor. They're now going back to the setup they used here uh, uh, earlier on. 
We won't see the number 93, the team car to Catherine Lake. By the way, she put in the third best time, which is going to better that now because she's just done the fastest first sector. No, we won't see Justin Marks and the rest of the 93 team. That car is still being put back together after a brake issue on that car sent Justin off at a very high speed section of the circuit at Tower Turn at Turn 13. That car had most, they had most of the, the uh, pieces to repair that car, but not all. Uh, they've had to do a bit of uh, proper racetrack engineering and got the welder out for the front chassis rails, the frame rails on that car. It's a mighty impressive uh, outlap there for uh, Gunnar Jeanette in car number 63. The uh, WeatherTech Racing uh, Ferrari this year, they've driven just about everything uh, over the last couple of years at that, that, that that, that crew. Porsche, Mercedes, uh, and now Ferrari. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, but that's that's a stout lap. Two minutes, 0 0.325 for his first flying lap. My goodness me. That is, uh, well, it's, it gets, yeah, first flying lap. That's amazing. Really, really impressive. Uh, you've got nearly over three quarters of a second over everybody else on that first flying lap. That is that car's fastest lap of the weekend so far, I believe. And it's going to be quicker this time around. It'll be under 120 seconds as it comes around. And any GT Daytona car that's under two minutes is a very quick lap indeed. It's going to Net. Heads back for the line through comes the 48. Madison Snow in second. No, Catherine Legg in second with a two minutes point six. She went about eight tenths quicker than that this morning in the final practice session. Waiting for Gunnar Jeanette to come across the line, and he does, and it is a 159.6. That's very quick. That's quicker than I think that's quicker than anybody went this morning. And it's quicker than anybody went uh, previously in GT Daytona. That is a new qualifying lap record. Tristan Vautier set the mark last year in the number 75 Mercedes in a 159.738 average speed, 112.446 miles an hour. So new lap record for Gunnar Jeanette in car number 63. Around the world from trackside here at Sebring, this is the GT Daytona qualifying for the Mobile One. 12 hours of Sebring presented by Advance Auto Parts. John Heinoff and Jeremy Shaw in the booth will be talking to the pole sitters with our Continental Tire Pit lane reporters, Diana Binks and Shea Adam in a wee while, but their action is fast on the track at the moment as Frank Monte Calvo comes through and posts a two minutes, 0.853. Everyone getting up to speed now. Jack Hawksworth in the Lexus. I said, watch out for the Lexus. The number 15 up into second, Thomas Jaeger in the 75 Mercedes-Benz goes through, but there's still half a second and more, Jeremy, away from Gunnar Jeanette's 159.6, yeah. the only man under two minutes. Yeah, brilliant lap by Gunnar Jeanette, absolutely sensational. He's ringing the neck of that Ferrari, that Scuderia, of course, of run Ferrari uh, in the WeatherTech colours. Brilliant job, and Jack Hawks was there, as we expected, right up in front. He's just gone purple in sector one, and the farther back, Daniel Serra's in 15th position also. He, he, he just went purple in sector two. He's gone up to second place in the other Ferrari, fight car number 51. That's the spirit of race entry for Daniel Serra. Shea, Adam, you should have no work whatsoever in this session because... If anyone comes in and does so much as checks the tire pressure on their cars, their car may not go back out, but also they will lose all of their lap times. There is no work allowed to go on on the cars while their qualifying session is on. Once you've left the pits, it is all up to the driver. Madison Snow improves again up to back up to third place ahead of Jack Hawksworth in car number 48. That's a Lamborghini, so it's a Ferrari, Ferrari, Lamborghini, at least it was. Thomas Jaeger, however, that uh, brightly livered number 75 car is back up into third. The third car under two minutes, 159.9. One, uh, and Gunnar Jeanette is in the pit lane. Now, he can come into the pit lane and wait, but they can't do any work on the car, as you've just heard. So. Hawks was on the quickie. Uh, and so is Christopher Meese in the Audi. <laughs> He's on a very quickie. How about 159.5? He's just taken a tenth out of Gunnar Jeanette. So Gunnar Jeanette, having just come into the pit lane, may have to go out again if he wants pole position for the 66th running of the Mobile One. 12 hours of Sebring presented by Advance Auto Parts. Jack Hawks was going to the top at 59.251. Uh, but Daniel Serra the Ferrari. is lighting it up. He's way quicker. He's mass. He's found all almost half a second already, and he's only in the third sector. This is massively impressive stuff from Daniel Serra. He's driving, uh, he drove with the same guys at uh, Daytona, the Look. Paul Della Lana team. 
He's showing how fast these Ferraris are. We don't normally get to see how fast the Ferraris are because they play their cars very, very close to their chest. Cross the line all the way out to the blue and white wrap tyres at the exit of turn 17. Now across the line, 59 yeah. flat, yeah. two and a half tenths faster than anyone else. And he's still on a quick one as the nose of the Ferrari dives towards the concrete into turn one. He gathers it back up again and throws it through the first corner. Yeah. He's on it. That car is very softly sprung at the front end. Those guys are hashtag respect the bumps is the brilliant piece of marketing from Sebring International Raceway. Well, those guys have learned. They are respecting the bumps. Now, what can Chris Meese do? Well, Gunnar Jeanette all of a sudden finds himself in fifth position, having held the, the well, lap record. Out again? No, uh, there's no way you can go out again, I don't think. The, the Continental tyres, they're good. I don't think there's enough in those tyres to be coming, able to come into the pits and go out again uh, and set another time. So I think Gunnar's done, but it was a brilliant effort by Gunnar. Being far and away, that car's fastest lap of the weekend so far. But So Gunner, how many cars so... underneath the previous qualifying record there now? Uh, it was a 59. 9.53. The old mark was 59.738. Right, so, so yeah, top five, five. top five have all broken the qualifying lap record as Chris Meese goes through and does not improve, but he's on another quick one and he's got room. I like the fact, you know, we've only got 17 cars out there. We're almost seeing single car qualifying here. Sarah, by the way, he's not finished. There's no. going to be a 58 here. Yeah. Jeremy, there's going to be a 58. We're going to take a second out of the qualifying record here. Daniel Sura in that 51 Ferrari, brilliant stuff. And I can tell you that the Ferrari folks are not going to be very happy with that because he's showing exactly how fast this car is. It is quick. Uh, and, uh, I mean, they're, they're going to be happy to get the pole, but, you know, generally speaking, we don't normally show, ex you know, pit the now. ultimate potential of the car. But Daniel pit now, Sarah, Daniel, pit on, now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> on the pole he was at Daytona, oh. set the fastest race lap at Daytona. He's coming towards the line, John. He's got a cross at 58.7, as predicted, a full second out of the lap record. He was in a beautiful... Beautiful flat four wheel drift with the rear continentals just slightly spinning coming out of turn 17. He's turned the traction control down, he's turned the APS down, and he is muscling that Ferrari. That is old school Ferrari driving from a young man with a big Ferrari future. Yeah, brilliant. 33 years of age now uh, is uh, Daniel Serra. Hard to believe that, because I can remember his dad, Chico, racing Formula Ford cars in England in 1977, I think it was. And uh, he was a great character. Chico made it all the way to Formula One, of course, with the Fittipaldi team. Uh, and uh, now Dan Daniel Serra, that second generation driver, he's a former winner of the Nextel uh, Copa, Copa Series in Brazil, the big stock car series down there. Uh, he's a two-time winner of that championship, and he's showing his paces here in North America as well. And the 51 car with the white nose on it is very old school Ferrari. It needs gold wheels. I want gold ah. rims on that car, and then it would be proper old school uh, Ferrari. The uh, Spirit of Race team for Paul Delalana, Pedro Lamy, Matthias Lauda, normally to be find to fa found in the FIA World Endurance Championship GTE, the GT Le Mans class, as we would call it, in the AM version of that in an Aston Martin. But they've got a few weekends off this year because of the transition season for the WEC. That's why those guys are here, and Chico Serra drafted into that team to help them make the transition to Ferrari. Daniel, yeah. Uh, uh, and, sorry, but yes, yeah, but yeah, have, you've got this is two poles in a row now for Daniel. Actually, actually, it's his third pole uh, overall because he had the pole at Master Raceway Laguna Seca in GTLM. Was that last year? Was that the year before? It was the year before, wasn't it? Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, book, the man, the, the young man, is fast, and that was a great event. Also, set the fastest lap at Daytona. Unfortunately, the the, uh, the car had some problems during the race and, uh, and was out relatively early. Jeremy, we normally talk about GT Daytona having six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven cars within a few tenths of each other. The gap between Daniel Surra and Chris Meese, who's just improved to second position, is half a second. Half a second. Absolutely extraordinary. Yeah, great lap there by Christopher Mies and in that uh, motorsport by Land uh, entry. That car, by the way, they changed the engine overnight on the number 29 car. They found some anomalies in the data yesterday evening, changed an engine over a long night for that team. Ben Keating. In Good the job, he's done. Mercedes AMG GT oh, is coming to the line. Gracious. Uh, mm. Kenton Cook also out there at the moment in the 71 Mercedes. Ferrari, Audi, Lexus, Lexus, Lamborghini, Ferrari, Mercedes, Acura, Ferrari, Acura in the top 10. 
So Catherine Legg just ahead of Christina Nielsen, the two girls there battling it out. Catherine will start in the 10th position. Christina Nielsen in, in the Porsche. Porsche. I'm surprised, Porsche this yeah, year, I thought course. she was going to be quicker than that. And Check uh, the flag is out, Jeremy. Here comes so the, the team. 14, Dominic Bauman. Looked like he might have been on a better run. Did he improve? Yes, he did. Uh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. 476 was his best. A 59 476. He just did a 936. Chris Meese sees the checkered flag, doesn't improve. He did a two minutes point six that time around. So who's out there? There was an improvement there for Tom Dyer in the number 69 Honda of America racing team. The Hart entry, that's one of the Acura NSX cars. Uh, not a full season campaigner in that number 69 car, but they had a great debut at Daytona. And uh, Tom Dyer, great to see him back at the wheel of a GT3 car. And he puts that car into the eighth position on the grid. Yeah, two minutes point zero. That's, that's stout. I like oh, that. certainly is, yeah. He'll be happy with that. Just pick Fred. Oh, pick hang Fred on a second. Montegalvo. Something I wasn't expecting to see. What's that? No, forget that. Sorry. Uh, reflection on the screen. Uh, Tim Pappas just gets his best lap as the chequered flag comes out in the 73 Park Place Porsche. Pappas in the Park Place Porsche. He's in 17th position. No, I thought there was a time next to the Justin Marks Acura there. Uh, that's what caught my eye, but it wasn't. Yeah, no. That car very heavily, heavily damaged yesterday, but that Michael Shank racing team, they've uh, got all the bits apart, and they're going to do some welding and try and get that car ready for tomorrow's race. There's uh, not enough time to build up a new car. Well, there aren't any other cars to be had, apparently, so they're, they're doing their best they can to repair this one. I haven't got an update on that today, but uh, they have a TIG welding equipment to... to, uh, to um, Put, put that you know, the, the front piece chassis together, yeah, frame they, together, yeah. yeah exactly. I, I, I like the way they've gone about that, uh, the Michael Shank Racing guys, because what they've said is, we're not going to rush it, we're going to try and get it out for the morning warm-up, 8 o'clock Saturday morning. Yeah. So let's work back from there and give ourselves a sensible programme of work where we still get some sleep as well, and that we arrive with a car that's put back together and a team that aren't completely wiped out before yeah. a 12-hour race. I think that's really smart. Daniel Sara brings the number 51, Spirit of Race Ferrari in. He hasn't just broken the lap record. He's taken it to 35,000 feet and slammed it onto the ground a full second quicker than the lap record and half a second on the field. And he has back-to-back -back pole positions in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. And that bright red Ferrari with the white nose will come to the green flag in the 66th running of the Mobile One. 12 hours of Sebring presented by Advanced Auto Parts as the top GT Daytona car. Let's go down for this Continental Tire pit lane report. Daniel. Daniel, many congratulations on taking that poll, GTD, Spirit of the... Uh, now, it's also, you also broken the lap record um, on that pole position, so you've, you've, you've made quite an, an impression today. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. Uh, we decided to do this, this uh, race in the last minute, and uh, car was... Since the first practice, car was really, really good. We, can, we are doing four drivers, so I didn't have a lot of time. Uh, track time, but I could feel that the car was really good, and then when I could put everything together, lap uh, should be good, and so I'm, I'm really happy. Yeah, it came together at the last uh, few moments there. Could you feel that you're on that rut, that secured lap? Like I, 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 I knew that it was a, a good lap. The car was better than the, the practice, like uh, with less grip because it's hotter, but more balanced. Uh, so yeah, I was just enjoying each corner. Well, I think the team are enjoying it as well. They were delighted when you drove back in here. Ah, yeah, I think it's um, it's awesome to start from pole position, second in a row. We did in Daytona, of course. It doesn't mean a lot for the for the result of the race, but it's always nice to start from pole position. Certainly on two classic uh, tracks like Daytona and Sebring. So well done. Well, thank you very much. Diana Binks with that Continental Tire. Pit lane report and the pole sitter for GT Daytona is Daniel Serra. And uh, referring there to the fact that the Daytona race was meant to be a one off. I asked Paul Dallalana if he was going to do the rest of the Tequila Patron North American Endurance Championship, the longer races in the IMSA Weather Tech Sports Car Championship. And at Daytona, they nah, maybe, maybe not. I don't think so. 
So they decided after they'd enjoyed Daytona so much that well, they would uh, would come out and, uh, and race again. Yeah, particularly kind of unfinished business because having had the problems at Daytona, not made it to the finish line, you know, uh, he's still got a point to prove. Well, Daniel Serra has proved that point again here this afternoon. Absolutely magnificent stuff for Serra. Chris Meese, you know, you break the lap records in qualifying, the qualifying lap record by half a second, and you're not on pole position. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, you've got to think it's not your day. The uh, the guys at Lance Audi... Particularly full half second behind the guy who did win pole position. Yes, exactly. It's not as if you're off by half a tenth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Half a second away. Yeah, uh, half a second underneath the track record and half a second behind the guy. Yeah. Yikes. But super close behind that, isn't it? All the way down to... Uh, the the top ten, all, all the rest of them covered by about a second. I tell you what, though, little golf clap for the Land Crew men members. Engine and gearbox change overnight. To have, they've had no rest really, uh, but that's a car that's gone back together perfectly. Good way to pay them back. They'll be on a front row start. Yeah, very much so. And that car also was strong last year. They're going to be, we hope, running. We haven't had an update on that whether they're going to be running the full season. That was certainly the intention and hope coming into Daytona. The Lexus were quick, Jeremy, yeah. and, you know, both of those cars under the previous lap record, but they'll find themselves side by each on the second row. And feeling good because they, they've made good strides, particularly on, on tyre uh, management on those cars. They look after their tyres a lot better than they did, and that's the one thing they've been working on particularly when they're here at the test a few weeks ago. So the GT Daytona cars will be leaving the pit lane as we get the green flag in a moment or two for the GT Le Mans cars, nine of them all lined up in the pit lane. I can see them already. And Shea Adam in this Continental Tire pit lane report can give us the qualifying drivers. Uh, who's going to be out there doing battle, Shea? In terms of our Fords, we are going to have Richard Westbrook and Joey Hand. Richard currently tied for the most pole positions in GTLM with one Nick Tandy, who's going to be driving the number 911. And Lawrence Vantour, given the duty for the number 912 in the Corvette realm of things, it's Antonio Garcia who will be driving the three. He's got three wins at this track. And Tommy Milner driving the four. He's had a lot of seat time, not only today, but over the course of the test that they did here a couple weeks back. It's James Colato who gets to drive the number 62 Risi Competizione Ferrari. Bit of a shock since Tony Wheeler got two poles at the end of last year and has been on fine form. But James, who got a third here last year, is looking to replicate that and do a little bit better in qualifying. And then for our BMWs, we have the two newbies, if you will. Connor Filippi is driving the car that he is sharing with Bill Oberlin and Alexander Sims. That's number 25. And Jesse Krohn, given the duties for the number 24. Thank you, and, Shep. And this morning, the BMWs were 1-2, weren't they? Yes, in, they the, were. in the final practice session, uh, a 1 minute 56.5 by Connor Filippi aboard car number 25. Jesse Krohn, a 156.8. Uh, as as uh, Shay says, the newbies to that team. Uh, I don't think that that time is going to be good enough for the poll this afternoon, but certainly it was a feather in the cap for BMW team RLL to have their two cars at the top of the charts in that final practice session. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a very interesting final practice session, which was early on this morning. Wasn't sure how many of the teams would take advantage of it because of the time difference and the obvious temperature difference to now when it's very serious. But everybody went out to get the track down, and Conor De Filippi stayed in the car for the whole amount of time, pretty much. Did a few little tweaks. The thing you've not got to do is try and chase the track at that time of the morning. You've got to and refine your and I'm driving standards. Let me correct myself. I was looking at the wrong second. 56.5 it was for BMW. Not I was, looking, I was thinking 57, but reading something different. So brain fade there. That is the fastest lap yes. of the weekend so far. My, my apologies for that. The lap record in GTLM was set last year by Ryan Briscoe, a 155.9 in the Ford GT. The Ford GTs have been really stout uh, at uh, certainly Daytona, they were the class of the field there. They've been the class of the field in each of the practice sessions so far leading up to qualifying prior to this morning. But big strides by BMW Team RLL. Stand by for action as we are under 30 seconds to the green flag for another 15-minute session. 
for the nine GT Le Mans cars, the two new BMW M8 resplendent in the sunshine. I'm not sure that you can actually make any car look worse by putting the BMW M Sport stripes on them. It is one of those classic and iconic motor racing liveries as the green flag is waving now. And the 15 minute clock is already counting down. Who's the early takers? Answer Corvette, a single Corvette rolling out down the pit lane. And it is the three car that's coming out. Thank you, Bubba. So how cool for Conor Di Filippi to get the uh, qualifying duties. That's number 25 car, 25 year old from San Clemente, California. Really talented youngster, got a great opportunity here this season to join that team and you know the uh, the GTLM category it's so intensely competitive virtually all the drivers in all of the cars are platinum rated drivers yeah, yeah they're the best of the best but four of the BMWs are, are, are actually golds uh, Conor Di Filippi uh, and along with all three drivers in the number 24 car Jesse Krohn, John Edwards and Nicky Katzberg they're all rated as golds as well not that's relevant to anything but it's kind of interesting perhaps uh, but there's some talented youngsters in that team, and these brand new cars are coming alive now with the slight, ch slight change. It wasn't a huge change to the bounce performance after Daytona, but it was enough, plus the development they made on that car, to make it competitive. The engine that you can hear in the background is that of Jan Magnussen. It's V10, isn't it? Hmm? V10, isn't it? Shrieking away. Oh, uh, 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 maybe not. No, no, no. no, no. That, Four cylinder? That, that no. there is the American V8. Yeah. That is Chevy power. Corvette with Jan Magnussen, who, I don't know about you, Jeremy, but yeah. I think he's driving as well I know what now as he's ever done. Last year, he was outstanding. I don't know what changed, if anything, or he just settled in, change of mindset or whatever. But my goodness, whatever the racing gods threw at him, he dealt with it and he knocked it straight back at them. And not always with the fastest car, but you know, the Pratt & Miller team, Corvette Racing are very good. They turned around the cars quickly in pit stops. Their strategy was perfect. And Jan and the rest of the team just kept delivering. Yeah, he and Antonio Garcia, they Great really are absolutely brilliant. You know, 44 years of age, Jan Magnussen is. I always reckon that uh, endurance drivers, well, any road drivers actually, late 30s, uh, sometime in their 30s, you know, at the peak of their career. Endurance racing a little bit later, uh, but uh, Jan Magnussen certainly is driving brilliantly, as in, a, as in an Antonio Garcia, who's a welcome youngster at 37. But these two, they're a great combination, joined, of course, by Mike Rockefeller for the Tequila Patron North American Endurance Races. Three super talented, super consistent, super pro professional drivers. Corvettes haven't been very quick so far this weekend, but I certainly wouldn't count them out for the race. Yeah, that number four car with Tommy Milner doing the qualifying duties is the first Corvette. Jan's just followed him out there. And what a year, as I say, last year. 62 on the circuit, starting a fast lap. James Collado, what a race he had here last year. Never been to the place before and did a cracking job. Did the majority of the race. I think he was in here there for 11 hours and 40 minutes. No, it wasn't that much, but he was in the race for a very long time. Couldn't do Petit Le Mans with the team because of a rather pressing addition to the family. And, uh, so had to stay at home. Back here after a great run last year and given the qualifying duties to recent come to Tioni. Now, Young Magnussen through the third corner, Christensen corner. Is it Magnus or is it the score? Uh, sorry, it's Garcia. just changed over. It's Garcia. My apologies. Yes, and, and Shea did say Garcia uh, was going to do it. I thought there might have been a, a late change. So it's Garcia and Milner in the three and four. Jesse Cron and Conor de Filippi in the two BMWs, 24 and 25. James Collado in the 62. Joey Hand in the 66. 67 is Richard Westbrook. Nick Tandy in the 911. And Lauren Van Tour in the 912. And pretty much across the board, those were the guys who did at least the last half of free practice for earlier on this morning. Yeah, right. And Shay Adams said a few minutes ago that uh, Richard Westbrook, who's qualified at number 67 for GT, is the. the uh, 
has more poles than anybody else out of the GTLM category since the advent of the Interior Tech Sports Car Championship dating back to uh, 2014 uh, with five, but on four are Joey Hand and Nick Tandy, who are both qualifying in this session today. So they are trying to equal Westy's mark of five. They would love nothing more than that. If you want to get in touch with us here, at, our, uh, at IMSA Radio on social media, at IMSA Radio, that comes straight into us here in the IMSA Radio Broadcast Centre. We're live from trackside, as we will be for the whole of the rest of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship season. The only broadcaster bringing you every single moment of every single session. And with a team, with the whole team, trackside, and Continental Tire Pit Lane reporters, and the booth commentators all on site to take you to the heart of the IMSA action. Follow us on the IMSA app. This weekend for the race, we're on Sirius 138, XM202. 454 is our scanner frequency at the circuit and, of course, around the world on IMSA Radio and IMSA.TV. If you're here in the US and you want to watch moving type pictures, Fox Sports Go, Fox Sports 1 and 2 with Brian Till up in the Fox Sports Centre in North Carolina heading up the broadcast. Those four GTs, they just look so purposeful, don't they? I mean, they are... It's, a, it's a, an iconic shape there, it really does you know, hark back to 50 years ago with the original Ford GTs, the GT40s, and boy, they are, they are fast and they just look great, but it's the BMWs that have come out of the box strong. Also here at the track, by the way, I should say, uh, 107.9 FM, and for the race at the weekend, 99.1 WWOJ, as well as uh, AM News Talk 730 and uh, Highlands ESPN 1050. AM, so we've got you covered uh, down here. Uh, the thing that I notice about those Fords, Jeremy, as we wait for these guys to get up to pace, um, is just how unfussed they look through the corners. Yeah. You know, cars fast down the straight, okay, fine, you kind of accept that, but they never look hustled through the corners. From turning through the apex to the exit, they just look, I mean, even over the bumps of 17, that is one of the most poised cars you will ever see through 17. Yes, the drivers are getting thrown around, but nothing like what we've seen from the other cars and particularly the prototypes. That is an extraordinarily stable platform. Yeah, they've got the damping just right on those cars, no question about it, it looked fantastic, but uh, it's still the, the BMWs in lead away, Conor Di Filippi, a 155.839 on his first flying lap. He's uh, not as quick this time around, lost about a second in the first sector. Uh, Jesse, Jesse Corona in second place, about a tenth of a second behind him. Richard Westbrook third, James Collado fourth at the moment in the recent competition in Ferrari, but Collado's just gone purple fastest of all in sector uh, one. Hello. What I love about this class is I can almost close my eyes and tell you what's just going by. Yeah. The Ford has a very distinctive flat V6 sound as it goes by. The Ferrari, not as much of the big Ferrari V8 wine as it used to be now that it's uh, twin turbocharged. Uh, the BMW read the same. Um, Corvette. Corvette. You always know the Corvette. Yeah. You feel it in your sternum as it goes by. Uh, and the flat six Porsche, since they put the new exhaust on it just before Le Mans last year, that, that thing, actually, it could be weaponized, that sound. That's how good it is. Here's James Collada now coming on to the uh, Ullman Straight on a very, very good lap. Purple in sector one, personal best in sector two. What can he do? Just one corner to go and now turn 17. It's one of the two most difficult corners on the track along oh. the turn one. Boy, that turn-in was so good on that Ferrari. It, it, it so pointy, that car, but he's held on to it. I mean, it's fantastic stuff. He needs to find half a second to go to pole position, four tenths to get onto the front row. He crosses the line. We've got a slight delay whilst we wait for the times to come in, and he goes on to the front row. Oh, he's almost got the provisional pull. Just missed out by half a tenth of a second. Fast 
fastest in sectors one and three. Down the tube, uh, down the twisty bits round the buck. Personal best, 0.058 of a second away for Conor Di Yeah, and Joey Hand was blisteringly fast through the middle sector hit there, but uh, he was personal best in one and three, but he's only moved up to fifth place. I thought it's going to be better than that for Joey Hand. He is fifth at the moment. The other guy who's charging, Lawrence Van Tour, he's ninth at the moment. 1.5 seconds off the ultimate pace. He's just got purple in sector one. Lawrence Van Tour, the 9-1-2 Porsche. Good over the bumps. Meantime, BMW 24 will head to the pit lane for Jesse Kron. He will be no better than third position with five minutes to go in the GT Le Mans qualifying session live from trackside for the 66th running of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, one of their blue riband events, the Mobile One. 12 hours of Sebring presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Yeah. Endurance lives in America. Here in Florida with the Rolex Daytona 24 and the Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring, two of the world's most famous endurance races. There goes the Corvette. No improvement there. See what De Lawrence Lawrence in the pits as well. Lawrence Van Tour coming off the final corner. Across the line he goes. Jumps up to sixth position. Half a second away from position four. Ball, top six, yeah, all within six, four tenths of a second. Conor Di Filippi, by the way, he's on to the pit lane as well. Just, just three laps for those two BMW Team RL M8s, looking, looking to keep their tyres as fresh as they can for tomorrow's race. Remember, you have to start on the, the, the cars with which you qualify. This is the only category within the three of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship where tyres are open, not uh, restricted to one manufacturer, not a spec tyre. Uh, it just so happens everyone are on Michelins here. They've all chosen Michelins, but they're not all on the same Michelins. Different compounds and constructions available to the different manufacturers because the cars, Jeremy, are so different in philosophy, layout, and, and the way they make their laps. Yeah, that's right, yeah, with the, the big front-engine Corvettes, the, uh, the mid-engine cars, the Ford, the turbocharged engine cars, some are turbo, some are not, no, some are normally aspirated. You know, it's, there is a bunch of different configurations, and Michelin has a great range of tyres, and then they, they have to pick what they want from the manufacturer. They can't go along on yes, you know, on Friday when they get to the race meeting and say, oh, I'd actually like some of those ones over there. No, they've made their selection in advance, and that's what they're going to be running in a race. But that's why you it's did so close to yeah, it's so close to actually. We've got BMW, Ferrari, BMW, Ford, Ford, and Porsche, all covered by a hair over four tenths of a second. Which Richard Westbrook's put his best time in last time around, 56. Zero, that leaves him oh, all of two and a half tenths away from a pole position. And that's two tenths away from the front row. He's still out there. Joey Hand has his best first sector in the 66 Ford. Richard Westbrook, has he got traffic in front of him as he goes through turn 16? Big dab of the Jean de Bienesses, rather, now through turn 16 onto the back straight, the Ullman straight here. Oh, right out to the very ragged edge of the blue and white curves. May have just dropped the Michelins over the edge a tiny bit, maybe a couple or three millimetres. It's that close. Now, down towards the braking area for turn 17. Gather the car up underneath you. Here he comes. His teammate is the one more likely to improve at the moment. Joey Hand has found a bit of time in the first sector. Those new candy colours of the red, white and blue haven't changed their livery, but the colours are a little more vivid as Joey Hand, Richard Westbrook has peeled off into the pitch, Joey Hand comes through, does not improve. That's a Corvette rumbling by. Antonio Garcia not improving. 156.3 that time around for Joey Hand, so just a, a little bit over a tenth of a second away from his earlier best. I'd be surprised to see any more improvements now within the final minute and a half of this qualifying session. Different noises from the engines are great. When the, when the Ford is off throttle, the uh, wastegate uh, anti lag is, makes the most ridiculous noise. It sounds like somebody sitting on a whoopee cushion. Huge slide through turn one by Nick Tandy, who was really leading on the number 911. And uh, very fast hands to catch the end of it. It's all going very nicely, and he's balanced. 
But then as the car comes back into line, it wants to switch direction very quickly. And that's when you've got to catch back up with the car and its lateral movement. But great driver by Nick Tandy. He's an absolute superstar. And boy, isn't this category going to be uh, one to watch at Le Mans this year? How many cars are going to be? 17 cars. 16, yeah, the field split exactly between prototypes and GTs for the first time in a, in a long time with the new P1 category. And the private E is absolutely flocking to that. The ACU have got a real hit on their hands there with that. Toyota, of course, with Alonso will be there. But the GT categories, GTE Pro and Am, uh, filling the other half of the field. And some of those cars will be here next year when the WEC come for their American race to Sebring, and they will be racing as part of the Mobile One Sebring 12 hours weekend next year. Still waiting to hear the, all the details. Some of those details have been fleshed out this weekend. Checkered flag is out. A lot of those details have been fleshed out, I think. But the BMW, of course, making its return to Le Mans this year as well. Yeah. Mostly, uh, just the two so, cars from BMW going to Le Mans. The American cars aren't going over. Right. So that's a difference from some of the other factories. Yeah, Ford, course. for example, which will, will have four cars there. And Porsche. And Porsche. Uh, Corvette take the two cars over from here, of course. Uh, it's all over and right. done and in the book. And a 155.839 against a 155.897. The gap between first and second, less than a tenth of a second. And as far as lap records go, qualifying records go? Yeah, the old record uh, was uh, 155.9. So yeah, we just uh, just got inside just that by it. about a tenth of a second or so. It was to, to run Briscoe, 155.939 for the Ford. Oh, now Conor Di Filippi is going to be in trouble here because he's... Ah, now, is he going somewhere else for the pool? Celebrations, or is he taking the car? Uh, he's now, Connor De Filippi should have got out of the car and allowed one of the mechanics to take that car to tech inspection. It is the uh, that is a, a waiver for the pole sitter. So, uh, so it is actually in the standing supplemental regulations, which is the sort of thing that I bring on a plane to read, that the pole sitter gets out of his car, waits with the car for the media interv interviews, and then gets back in again and the car drives the car to tech inspection. So that car uh, heading to the post-qualifying tech. So apologies for not being able to have a word with Connor D. Filippi. He'll be getting a slap on the knuckles for that. Well, of course, it's been a little while since we've had a BMW on the car, hasn't it? <laughs> You're a harsh man, Damn Mr. It. Shaw. I can look it up now, haven't I? Bobby Rehal, uh, to the uh, to the race director. Sorry, we forgot. It's been a long time since we've been there. <laughs> the technical inspection took place at the turn 17 end of the infield paddock. And the car's going into Park Fermi, not allowed to be touched by the team before they are cleared by our hard-working team, IMSA technical team of inspectors. Long Beach in 2016, I reckon. Wow, yeah, that is a long time ago. Yeah. And we haven't had the joy of speaking to a BMW personage. I wonder if Cher or Diane can, uh, Diana can grab Bobby or somebody from the team who is down there. We'll have a quick word with them instead just to... Uh, just to get their pers perspective on it, Jeremy. Yeah, Bill Oblin on the pole at Long Beach in 2016. Also here at Sebring as well, uh, Bill was on the pole. So those are the last two uh, top qualifying efforts for BMW Team RLL. Welcome back. Two tremendous qualifying sessions there with GT Daytona and GT Le Mans two new track records. What's in store for us in the prototypes? Not really quite sure what to expect, to be honest, because um, I'm not sure whether we've seen the ultimate capability of the cars so far. It was the Acura that was fastest this morning. So head down to the 25 BMW pit where Diana has uh, found one of the team members to have a chat with about their pool position. Diana? 
Ofa, many congratulations on that pole position, but we were just waiting to, to have a chat and uh, the car drove off. We understood that they needed to stop here so we could have a quick chat to congratulate you all, obviously. Can, from your perspective, why did the car move off? Um, well, just technical regulations. After everything now, they go back to um, Park for May and everybody gets weighed and things like that and gets checked. So standard procedure. Long Beach 2016 was your last uh, pole position in this series. Um, so it must mean a lot to the team. Yeah, it's a um, great result for the team. Um, first, and, first and third here, so that's great. Um, a lot of work's being done on the M8 GTE. A lot of work from in Munich back, as well as in, uh, in Ohio, everyone on BMW Team RLL. So very proud of the result. Yeah, we've spoken to a few of you over the last few days, and everyone has really been very focused uh, on what they can. Early days ahead of the race, but a great result. So congratulations. Thank you. That's uh, Diana Binks down there with uh, Uwe Wolf for the 25 BMW team. And uh, this on Twitter to uh, at IMSA Radio. And these, these kind of comments make me laugh a lot. Uh, Nigel Dobby uh, has said, how come the GTLM class BOP is so rubbish for Sebring? Surely IMSA has enough data to get this right. Yeah, it's so rubbish uh, because the whole field, apart from Tommy Milner, who made a mistake on his qualifying lap, the whole field, it, 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 actually the whole field is within a second uh, and most of it's within seven tenths. So, that, yeah, that is absolutely rubbish, Nigel. You're absolutely right. Uh, Nigel is only happy when Corvette are driving away from the field, in fairness. <laughs> and yeah, I kind of understand for, that. Stick around for the race. Well, as we said, you know, Corvette don't need the fastest car to win races. And uh, they, they've done that with monotonous regularity over the years. And when you actually look at the data more deeply than a one-lap dash, Nigel, as you very well know, and I'm certain that you've put that in there just to be a little contrary, uh, that... If you look at the fastest race laps, if you look at the average laps over stints, then the, uh, the differential between the different manufacturers are minuscule in terms of a lap that is a couple of minutes uh, around. Right, let's make that correction, by the way. Uh, my apologies to uh, John Edwards and BMW, because it was John Edwards who had the pole position last year at Circuit of the Americas. So it wasn't two years ago, it was just last year at Circuit of the Americas that the last poll for BMW. But still, nevertheless, this is the first poll for the uh, M8 and the team and all at BMW, no doubt they'll be thrilled with that. Particularly for Conor Filippi too, his first poll in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, making the move over from being a full-time driver in Europe for the last several years, won the ADAC Masters Championship a couple of years ago and got this opportunity to drive for BMW now as a factory driver in the 2018 season. Uh, at IMSA Radio, by the way, uh, that's another pole sitting record or another qualifying record. Two out of two at the moment. And still to come, the fire breathing monsters, the thoroughbreds, the cars that are built for one reason and one reason alone. We call them prototypes because there's no lower limits to how many you have to build. You could just make one of them and go racing. And these are the cars that have one purpose in life, to go very fast for a very long time indeed, up to 24 hours. A couple of weeks ago, up at the Rolex 24 of Daytona. Only 12 hours this weekend, but on a circuit that takes twice as much out of everything, including the drivers here on the bumps at Sebring. Hashtag respect the bumps for the 66th running of the Mobile One Sebring 12 hours, presented by Advance Auto Parts. And I've got no clue, Jeremy Shaw, who is going to be on pole position in about well, 16, 17 minutes' time. I think the accuracy is going to be hard to beat, to be honest. Uh, Ricky Taylor, it was, who set the fastest time this morning at a 147.0. Uh, that was the uh, fastest lap of the weekend so far. Previously, uh, he'd, he'd set the benchmark at 147.8. That was yesterday afternoon. So big jump this morning for the Acros. They are looking stout coming to this weekend. The old lap record, by the way, in qualifying, set one year ago by Neil Gianni in the Rebellion Global P2 car, the Orica Gibson. But uh, Ricky Taylor well underneath that mark. Uh, Shea Adam is looking into the driving area of the cars to tell us who will be qualifying so we know before and I'll, I will listen to you this time Shea rather than listening and then completely forgetting within uh, 30 seconds of you telling me who was qualifying the two Corvettes uh, what have we got 
I don't know if I'll even remember 30 seconds after saying them all because there are so many of them. In Fair the, point. In the five, the Mustang sampling car that won the 24 hours of Daytona, Philippe Albuquerque is piloting that one. The 31, which is the Whalen Engineering Cadillac, I almost said the other one, uh, that one is Felipe Nazar qualifying duties for the core Autosport goes to the ever quick Colin Brown. And then for United Autosport, the qualifying duty goes to a rookie. Which rookie might be asking? Paul DeResta. For the 85, the banana boat, it is Simon Tremor. And for the 99, which is the Red Dragon, Steven Simpson. A little bit further down, the 38 Performance Tech. I saw Pato Award in his fire suit earlier, so I think it's probably him. We've seen on the screens that the seven is Ricky Taylor, that the six is Juan Pablo Montoya, and Olivier Pla is in the number two. I have to really kind of run down the other end. This pit lane's really long, John, but I will let you know when I get to them who's in the 52, the 22, the 90, and all the rest of the field. Yeah, Pato Award uh, in the 38 team. That, they, that team doesn't have a... a, a acknowledged race engineer this weekend scott raymond who was with him at daytona not here this weekend i gather I'm quite sure what happened there to be honest but uh, they, they, i saw the drivers last night uh, both uh, patricia award carl masson and uh, and uh, james french they weren't particularly happy with their car yesterday but made some ch changes overnight they put their heads together pano award this morning set the third fastest time a 147.8 and that uh, was underneath the old lap record, so a brilliant effort by young Pado, who, of course, just a, well, a, a couple of hours ago was winning the uh, Prototype Light Championship, the Prototype Challenge presented by Mazda Race. Uh, in the, That was the second round of that championship, a brilliant win for Pado Award. Uh, and it was a, he came from behind and smoked the field in the other stages. So he's on a bit of a roll at the moment. He also won last weekend at... Uh, St. Petersburg in the Indy Lights race. So, Pano Award, he's going to be uh, a stout contender here, but I don't think he's going to have anything for the uh, factory DPI cars. The, the, the number five Mustang sampling car only did eight laps this morning. I don't know whether the, why that was, because everybody else did significantly more laps. Everybody else did around about uh, 20 or more laps for during that final practice session this morning, but only eight for the number five car. That's the car that won at Daytona and uh, always is a contender for any round of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. But yeah, I think my money is going to be on the Acuras this afternoon, uh, and particularly Ricky Taylor. He's, uh, he's uh, a master of qualifying, and he is going to be uh, right in contention for, for this pole position, looking to get a, a second successive win in this event. Of course, last year drove for the family team, for his yeah. dad's Konica Minolta team, that now switching across to Acura Team Penske. But that's a great opportunity for him to get back uh, onto the uh, onto the pole mark. Uh, also opens up a few other um, opportunities, doesn't it? Because, you know, Penske do other things, shall we say. Um, and we know that he is invested in other things yes. in terms of driving specifically in the month of may yes. somewhere in indiana yes uh, draw the join the dots yourself dear listener and viewer live from trackside rs2 imsa radio part of the radio show limited network synchronized beautifully in sound and vision with imsa tv as we bring you these live pictures and sound from the build-up to the 66th running of the mobile one sebring 12 hours and that is a saturday race remember for those of you who are planning your weekend and the daylight savings time here in florida has started started last weekend so that is only a four hour difference now to the uk five hours to central europe other time zones are available check local listings for details so make sure you get your timings right a lot of motorsport this weekend moto gp starting out in Qatar under the lights Always very spectacular. And here this weekend, under somewhat fewer lights, we will be racing into the very dark darkness here at Sebring. And finding out who is our 2018 Sebring champion. Starting the fast laps, Olivier Platt goes out of the pit lane. Philippe Albuquerque is on a quickie already in the number five Cadillac. Four different chassis manufacturers represented here. 
spread across the global LMP2 cars, which aren't allowed to be changed. That's a spec formula. The DPI is very much modified. Different engines, different bodywork, but the same underpinnings. One of four approved chassis. Talara, Oreka, Ligier on Rook, and Riley Multimatic are the four suppliers. The Acura with the input from HPT and Penske using the Oreca. Development of the Oreca 07 underneath that car, but with very different bodywork to that which the Oreca's in P2 spec, the global spec, are running. Which is one of the cars that uh, Pato Award used this morning, uses uh, to run the third fastest time this morning. That was number 38, probably the smallest team in the in the field here in the prototype ranks based in in south florida performance tech motorsports at number 38 team they really do put punch above their weight and uh, looking for pato award here uh, i presume it is qualifying the car is it where is it number 38 car uh 38 french yeah i know it is pato award is at the wheel of that car yeah okay good it's gonna be interesting to watch Little mistake by the Spirit of Daytona, number 90, out on the far side of the circuit from us. Now, who was aboard that one? That's Tristan Vautier. And at turn 10, just going a little bit deep, left his braking a tad late. That team had an unscheduled engine change yesterday in that number 90 Spirit of Daytona Cadillac. A few engine problems this season, haven't we? We thought, well, that car had a, an engine failure during the race at the Royal X24 Daytona. It didn't, didn't reach the finish line, and the two Action Express run cars, the Mustang Sampling oh. entry car number five, and the wheel and engineering number 31, both having problems in the late stages. Redesigned engine for that car, remember? They've come down in engine capacity from last year. Uh, turn 10, one of the rail action areas, exactly the same mistake. Was that Pato? By Pato Awards that we saw a couple of moments ago from Tristan Fortier. Now, I've done a bit of digging around, and thanks to Andrew Marriott for some of this as well. Same corner again. Now, is there a problem? Is there something down there? That is the number seven, Penske. That's Ricky. Ricky Taylor, and it's turn 10. Is there something on the surface there that is causing people to lose grip? Uh, thanks to Andrew Marriott for doing a bit of digging around. The uh, I thought that was just a, a change now he's lost the back end on the bumps, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he just carried too much speed into the corner. He'd just gone purple in sector one, Ricky Taylor, so he knew he was on a fast lap. He was pushing it to the limit and a little bit beyond there in turn 10. Car will take just a little bit too much. Drivers like to feel the turn in, but that one just a little lively on the back end. Maybe just caught the inside curb yeah. there as well with the right-hand side wheels. I'll get this Cadillac engine story out in a minute. I thought the Cadillac engine and the changing capacity down over was modifications made to the existing engine so that either sleeved it or downstroked it. Not the case. That is a new engine design. And it had some overheating problems at Daytona, which is interesting because it wasn't very hot at Daytona this year. Um, that has not been solved here, is what the word is from the teams. And they, they are... They are looking into it, yeah. almost literally, heads off, looking into it. Uh, and it's pretty warm this afternoon, but this is just a 15-minute session they've got to get to tomorrow. They've got to get through 12 hours, and it's supposed to be significantly warmer tomorrow as well. 85 degrees Fahrenheit on the Fahrenheit scale and above tomorrow here. So Juan Pablo Montoya was uh, atop the charts in car number six. He was then eclipsed by Tristan Vautier in that Spirit of Daytona car number 90, 147.7 for Voce, Felipe Nasser in car number 31, that's the Wheel and Engineering, Action Express, Cadillac number 31, 47.9. Vautier was muscling that uh, was. blue Dallara Cadillac around, really throwing it at the corners. It, it's great to see these cars on this circuit. It, this is a concept that IMSA have developed themselves with this manufacturer input into the LMP2 chassis, and it's working really well indeed. Spin and a stall momentarily at the final corner Sebastian for the 5-2 car. And that was Sebastian Saavedra. Uh, Olivier Pla up into second place in the number two Nissan, and less than a tenth of a second between him and Tristan Vautier wow. now, who's still fastest. 
So that's in chassis terms, it is Delara, Ligier, Delara, Oreca, Ligier, Riley Multimatic. Lazy spin for the 52 of Saavedra in the yellow and red car. Purple there for Tristan Vautier does improve a 47-4 yes, now Hello. for Vautier. But uh, Olivier Plaza on a better lap. Ricky Taylor up into second place in Acura number seven. Gets it right this lap. Juan Montoya with a 173 mile an hour run through the speed trap. People to Rani, 173.4. Watch these, those two cars. That's the 22 and the six. They're building up to something here. May just be running a little more skinny, a little less rear wing. Get them down the tubes. There's a couple of long drags on this straight. You compromise yourself through the twisty bits. Speed trap is about three quarters of the way down the Ullman straight. Durrani coming down. It's not their maximum speed. Turns into turn 17. The back tyres. The Continentals are off the ground. Two, three, four, five times. And a huge slide towards the wall for people. Durrani. Uh, excuse me, by Olivier Pla, who comes round in, 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 despite having to fight that, it looked like he was on a, a bull what? ride in a, on a Texas bar. I mean, he's literally flying yeah, around all turn four wheels were off the ground, I think, at least yeah. a couple of times there. That's crazy. It's an extraordinary camera work by our operators down there. And a huge sideways slide, not a scintilla of a lift off the right-hand pedal by Oli Plart. And he's one and a half tenths of a second away from Tristian Vortier. And the Nissans do have the best trap speeds coming into qualifying, the fastest trap speed, 176.2 by that car, car number two. The uh, number 22 car, the sister car, 175.8. And then the uh, one of the Oricas, uh, the JDC Miller Motorsports, number 85, also plus 175. And Dane Cameron in the uh, Acura, also over 175. That cannot be comfortable, what we've just seen there. Yeah, you can't run like that for, you know, a couple of hours in the race. Uh, Bill Adam has stepped into the IMSA Radio Broadcast Centre behind me and looked at that straight away. Too much rebound. And he knows this place. Couple of cla cla class wins here. Two class wins here, yeah. You know, he knows of what he speaks. But that is sensational. A great camera work around the world. These pictures being beamed today, wherever you are, whatever time zone you're on, that's just woken you up, hasn't it? 48, Cadillac, Nissan Power in second, Acura Power in third, Vortier Plat, Taylor, People Durrani, Philippe Nazar, Juan Montoya, the top six, Philippe Albuquerque, only in seventh, in the, one of the cars that was the class of the field at Daytona. Mazda yet to show the same pace in qualifying as they did in the latter parts of the free practice sessions. Yeah, but last night in the, in the night practice, it was running around to turn 148.2 in car number 77, the Mazda team Yost. Best they can, he can manage in this session, 148.4. That's a little surprising. He hasn't found a little bit of speed. Warmer conditions here, in fairness, and they were setting their cars up for the end of the race. Yeah, but that's the point. They were setting up for the end of the race, not for qualifying, yeah. I thought, last night in those cooler conditions. So with a lot less fuel now, a, a fresh set of, of Continental tyres, surprised with a little bit more speed, but he's still within a second of the pole time at the moment. 55 comes across the line. Jonathan Bomarito, he's starting another lap, commits to turn one. Meantime, coming to the end of the lap, turn 17, sunset. Pipo Durrani. He looks like he's winding up to... Oh. No, he's coming at the pit lane. Stayed hard right. There was an improvement last lap for Felipe Nasser in car number 31. <laughs> Tristan he, Vortier. He's on a better lap now, too. Tristan Vortier running out the road at the end of turn one somehow. Managed to hold on to it. He's just having too much fun. Yeah. You're going to have to dock his wages because, you know, the, he's, he's having far too much fun. Tristan Vortier. I'm sure this, yeah, it's all right, Tristan, you can come in, you've got a tenth and a half on the field. No, 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 I can find a bit more. I can find a bit more. I know where there's another half a tenth. I know where there's another tenth. I'm sure. Felipe Nasser in car number 31 was uh, quicker through the first sector than the previous lap, but oh. must have made a mistake halfway around that lap because he's aborted that lap. And you'll see now if he can uh, rest, wrestle anything more out of that number 31 car with less now than 90 seconds remaining in this qualifying period. Ricky Taylor and Pipa Duran, number seven and 22, third and fourth, on two pit lane there. Their runs are done. Vortier still trying. And 
Bill Adam, staying out there, but not going particularly quickly. Bill Adam just watching the car coming through 17 a few moments ago. Much smaller movements he's noticing on the back of the car. So their suspension settings a lot different. And that Dallara chassis looking very, very composed indeed. We don't have a Dallara global car here. Um, they've been... Tristan Verge on a, on a better middle sector, yeah. but not such a good first sector on this lap he's for the Frenchman car number 90. If, coming he, in the if, pits. He, if he doesn't come in, he's winding he's up to a quick one, and he hasn't come in. He's all the way out to the wall. So halfway around, he picks up the pace, goes across the line now. Uh, that was a four... Oh, yeah, so that wasn't a fast lap, but it was a 47.999. So, you know, that, that still was good enough for fifth position, sixth position. And Tristan Vautier, he had the, uh, the pole position here last season, but that was in GT Daytona. Now he's stepping up to the prototypes and trying to repeat as the pole sitter here at the 12 hours of Seabury. NASA will just about get to the line for one more if he wants it. Yes, he stays out in the red and white Cadillac. I don't think he quite made it. I think that, well, oh, OK. No, no. no. Checker came just. out, just came out, so he won't make it. You're right, Jeremy, good sport. By half a second, probably. Still, it's a good, consistent lap save for Felipe Nasa, but he'd have to be the best he can manage now is fifth place on the grid. Now, they need to be on the phone to Vautier saying, Pla is not improving, you don't need to push. And that'll be another radio message that he can ignore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of static, static, that's a, static. That's pretty impressive for Vautier to be on the pole in GT Daytona one year and then in the prototypes the next year. Good for him. But come back next year in GTLM for the set. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The modern day David Brabham. I think David Brabham had poles in all of the classes throughout his American Le Mans series career. 28-year-old Frenchman. Lived for, for several years in St. Petersburg. Only a couple of hours away from here. Doesn't any longer. I think he's based primarily now in uh, in Europe, but uh, he's sort of kind of moving back and forth. And uh, really, really talented young driver. Of course, he's driven an IndyCar pretty really impressively as well. Uh, but now he's got this great ride with the Spirit of Daytona team. He's intended to take this advantage. He wants to stay in the prototype ranks. The Cadillacs are just tremendous fun to drive. And Ricky Cameron, who is the chief engineer for Spirit of Daytona Racing, clearly has got a really, really good setup on that number 90 car. They had the engine change yesterday, but bounced back really super strong. And they will be thrilled here in Florida to get that pole position for the Daytona-based team. Now, let's hope that we get a chat with uh, our pole sitter at the front of the Mobile One 12 hours, hours of Sebring presented by Advanced Auto Parts Field. Let's uh, go down for a Continental Tire pit lane report. Who have we got down at the Cadillac pit? Excellent. <laughs> I'll take it there, John. Double, uh, double th teaming, just in case he tries to drive away. Get down and stand in front of the car so he exactly. can't drive away. Exactly. No, we've, we've decided that this uh, driving straight to tech stuff, that just didn't work for us. So Tristan getting clearance from the team to get out of the car because he's got to do the interview. That's part of the rule book. He's given a fist pump to the cameras before he... Uh, finally makes that move. He knows what this is all about, getting pole at Sebring, as you guys rightly have been mentioning, that Mercedes uh, pole from last year. And that was pretty exciting for him. He's had, had a really good month. Second overall, Bathurst 12 hour, first week of February. The test went well for them. He felt like he was uh, pretty successful. And now, kicking off the 12 hours of Sebring in fashion. We'll see if we can get into him really quickly. Uh, even before he's got his helmet off. Tristan, pole again two years in a row. Were you pushing as hard as possible to thank the team for giving you a new engine yesterday? Yeah, of course, I'm always, uh, I'm always pushing as hard as I can, you know me. Uh, this, one, um, this one was a bit unexpected, to be honest. Uh, we ran into a lot of issues in practice and we barely got some, uh, some laps to try stuff and you know, get set up with the driving, but we just came back to what we had at the test for quality, which proved to be the right thing to do. And uh, I think everybody caught, got caught off guard a little bit because it was so hot that the tires came in quick and then degraded, which is not typical with the Continental tires. Uh, so we had to get the lap time done uh, early. That's what we did. I'm really happy because the guys had a rough time uh, this weekend, had to work hard. And uh, we were just going into the qualifying pretty unprepared, we felt. But maybe that was good. We didn't have time to overthink and uh, focused on our basics and uh, just very happy. 
Congratulations, 18 hours to celebrate and then the 12 hours tomorrow. Thank you. Shit, Adam, with that Continental Tire pit lane report, we've set three pole positions. We have three new qualifying records here at Sebring. Congratulations to Daniel Surra and the 51 Spirit of Race GT Daytona Ferrari team, to Connor De Filippi for BMW and the 25 Rahal Letterman Lanigan. Uh, BMW M8 GTE and the Tristan Vautier and the rest of the Spirit of Daytona team for the number 90. He will be on pole position for the Saturday running of the Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring for 2018 presented by Advance Auto Parts and you'll hear and see it all live here on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV.